In this session, we will understand about the advantages of describing and storing data in a DBMS and queries in DBMS. There are several advantages of using DBMS instead of file systems. We have got an idea of these in our previous video, but we will revisit them at a deeper level. One of the main advantages of using a database system or database management system is that the users can control, edit and manipulate via database administrator and hence a better centralized management and control over the data. The database administrator is the focus of centralized control. Any application requiring a change in the structure of a data records requires an arrangement with DBA who makes necessary modification. Such modification do not affect other application or users of record that are there. Let us understand these advantages by the help of an example. We will use this example to understand the advantages in this whole video. We are taking a very basic example where we will use a school database and there will be separate applications that we are assuming that would be storing different or even few same information like a roll number, name, class of the student, phone number and address of the student. We will see how a centralized database management system would help a user to properly use these information even if the users are from different sections like accounting, teaching, sports and etc. Let us start with redundancy. By having centralized database most of the factors that contribute to data redundancy can be avoided. It is not mandatory that all data redundancy should be eliminated. Sometimes it is necessary. And sometimes there are essential business and technical reasons for maintaining multiple copies of the same data in a database management system. However, this redundancy can be controlled. It is clear from the above file systems that we are talking about that there are some common data of students which has to be mentioned in each application like roll number, name, class, phone number, address and other things. This will cause the problem of redundancy which results in the wastage of storage space and difficult to maintain but in case of centralized DBMS the data can be shared by number of application and the whole school can maintain its computerized data with the following database. So we have here general office, library, account office and hostel. The people sitting in these areas are using different systems or different application where they are storing roll number, name, class and other information. By using a database management system the redundancy can be sorted out. So the problem of redundancy can be solved by joining of relation on the basis of common column that is roll number. If any user of library system needs the name of any particular student so by joining the library and general office relation on the basis of column roll number the person can easily retrieve this information. Suppose any user of library system needs the name address of any particular student and by joining of library and general office relations on the basis of column roll number the person can easily retrieve this information. Thus we can say that centralized system of DBMS reduces the redundancy of data to great extent. Next is integrity. Integrity of data means that the data in the database is always accurate or almost always accurate such that incorrect information cannot be stored in database. Integrity is of utmost importance when important information is stored and loss of data cannot be afforded. In order to maintain the integrity of data, some integrity constraints are enforced on a database. A DBMS should provide capabilities for defining and enforcing these constraints. Let us see 
these constraints. Let us consider the case of school database and suppose that the school is having only from nursery to 8th class. But if a user enters the class 9, then this incorrect information must not be stored in the database and must be alerted that this is an invalid data entry. That means when a user is defining class as class 9th, there should be an alert system that will alert the user that he or she has entered the invalid data. Coming to the file system, in case of file system, this constraint must be enforced on all the applications separately and hence it is tedious. Why? Because all the applications have a class field. Now in case of DBMS, this integrity constraint is applied only once on the class field of general office and all the other application will get the class information about the student from general office table so that the integrity constraint is applied to the whole database. Next is reduced inconsistency. When the same data is duplicated and the changes are made at one side which is not propagated to other side it gives rise to inconsistency and the two entries regarding the same data will not agree or will not accord with each other. At such times, the data is said to be inconsistent. So if the redundancy is removed, chances of having inconsistent data is also removed. Let us again consider the college system and suppose that in this case of general office file. So here is our example. In case of general office file, it is indicated that the role number 5 lives in Meghalaya. But in the library, it is indicated that the role number 5 lives in Jalandhar. Then this is a state at which these two entries of the same object do not agree with each other. That is, one is updated and other is not. At such time, the database is said to be inconsistent. Let us consider again the example of school system and suppose that the row number 5 is shifted from Meghalaya to Jalandhar. Then the address information of row number 5 must be updated. Whenever row number 5 and address occurs in the system, in case of file system the information must be updated separately in each application. But if we make updation only at 3 places and forget to make updation at the 4th application, then the whole system shows the inconsistent result about row number 5. In case of DBMS, row number and address occurs together only single time in general office table. We can say that redundancy of data greatly affect consistency of data. If redundancy is less, it is easy to implement consistency of data. Thus DBMS system avoids inconsistency to great extent. So it needs single updation and then other application retrieve the address information from general office which is updated. So all application will get current and latest information by providing single update operation and this single update operation is propagated to whole database of or all other application. Means when anything in the general office say for example the address is updated, it will be consistently updated in other columns as well. Next is shareable data. As explained earlier, the data about name, class, father name, etc. of general office is shared by multiple application in centralized DBMS as compared to file system. So now applications can be developed to operate against the same stored data. The application may be developed without having to create any new stored files. So by using a DBMS, anyone who is seated in library can just log in and understand the information that is in general office. Anyone who is in hostel can log in and understand about the account office. 
So that's why DVMS is very handy when you want to share data between or across the departments. Next is standardization. Since DVMS is a central system, so standard can be enforced easily. It can be at company level, department level, national level or international level. The standardized data is very helpful during migration or interchanging of data. The file system, if we talk about it, it is an independent system. So standard cannot be easily enforced on these file system because they are multiple independent applications. Next is restricted access. When multiple users share a database, it is likely that some users will not be authorized to access all the information. For example, account office data is often considered to be confidential and hence only authorized persons are allowed to access such data. In addition, some users may be permitted only to retrieve data, whereas others are allowed both to retrieve and update. Hence, the type of access operation, retrieval or update must be controlled. This is done by DBA. Typically, users or user group are given account numbers protected by passwords, which they can use to gain access to the database. A DBMS should provide a security and authorization subsystem, which the DBA or database administrator uses to create accounts and to specify accounts restrictions. These can be across departmental level or hierarchical level. The DBMS should then enforce these restrictions automatically. Next are the disadvantages of DBMS. First is complexity. Because of its own functionality that is expected out of a sound DBMS, it makes a DBMS an extremely complex piece of software. Database designers, developers, database administrators and end users must understand this functionalities to take full advantage of it. If a database designer fails to understand the best design that would suit for a DBMS, it can lead to bad design decisions. If an end user training is not proper, it can lead to serious consequences for an organization. Next is size. The expanse of functionality makes the DBMS an extremely large piece of software. The DBMS occupies many megabytes of the disk space and requires substantial amounts of memory to run efficiently. Next is performance. Typically when you talk about a file based system, it is written for a specific purpose such as invoicing. As a result, you generally find its performance to be fast. However, when you talk about DBMS, it is developed to be more in general to cater many needs like sales, purchasing and other things. And hence the speed is one of the issues. Next is the impact of a failure. Higher impact of a failure. The centralization of resources increases the vulnerability of system. Since all the users of the application rely on the validity of the database management system, the failure of any component can bring the whole operation of an organization to a standpoint. Next is the cost that is involved. The cost of the database management system varies significantly. It also depends upon the environment and functionality that is being demanded or that is being provided. There is also a recurrent annual maintenance cost. And hence, there are steep cost associations with using and maintaining a database management system. Then when you talk about hardware costs, there are additional hardware costs that are involved. The disk storage requirements for database management system and database will push towards the purchase of additional storage space that is costly. Furthermore, to achieve the required performance, it may be necessary to purchase a larger server perhaps even a machine dedicated to running the database management system separately. The procurement of these additional hardware results in further expenditure which are high in cost. 
Let us move towards the queries in RDBMS. What is query? The structure query language is a programming language that is designed to manage data stored in relational databases. SQL operates through simple database declarative statements. This keeps data accurate and secure and helps in maintaining the integrity of database regardless of its size. Some of the common queries we will look upon now. First is select. Select column name from table name. Select statements are used to fetch data from database. Every query will begin with select. For example, select star from customer master will give all the information from table customer master. Example select name from customer master will give only information that is present in the name column of the table customer master. Next is max. Select max column name from table name. Max is a function that takes the name of a column as an argument and returns the largest value in that column. Select max age from student master will return the maximum age of the student. Next is minimum or min. Select min column names from table name. Min or minimum is a function that considers the name of column as an argument and returns the minimum or the smallest value of that column. Select minimum age from student master will return the minimum age from the students list. Next in our common queries is distinct. Select distinct column name from table name. Select distinct specifies that the statement is going to be a query that returns unique value in the specified columns. For example, select distinct city from employee master will give you Delhi, Mumbai and Chennai. Whereas we can see there are four cities but the Delhi is common. Next is sum. Select sum column name from table name. Sum is a function that takes the name of a column as an argument and returns the sum of all the values in the column. When you run this query, select sum salary from employee master, it will give you the addition of 20, 18, 15, 5 and 15,000 apparently as 68,500. Next is where. Select column name from table name where column name operator value. Where is a clause that indicates you that you want to filter the result that includes only rows where the following condition is true. For example, if I want to look at the name of the person whose salary is 15,000, 1500, I would run this query. That is, select star from name where the salary is 15,000, 1500. It will give the result as Gracie. In the next video, we will see about the transaction management and structure of a DBMS as well as components of DBMS.